G'day guys, welcome back to another episode. Today you join me on the boat in the garage here today. I'm going to film or show you guys all the setups that I have and sort of give you guys advice if you are looking to go to a tackle shop and think about what type of rod and reel will suit for your purposes out on whether it be the ocean or the river or anything that you are targeting. So let's firstly get into it. We're going to start with light tackle and then work our way all the way up to heavy tackle. So <clears throat> with my rods and all my setups a lot of the techniques or the fish that i target will determine on the rods and reels that i use so for example flathead i won't be using anything over that three to seven kilo range which would we classify as a medium one so if i was going for like a really really big flathead i might go for the medium three to seven kilo rod but if i was going for just our generic flathead and i was flicking small soft plastics I might go down to a two to four kilo, one to two kilo rod just to suit. But let's get into the setups and I can talk about them more in detail. So the first setup I want to talk to you guys about is the Daiwa Legalis. So a Daiwa Legalis and it's got a crossfire reel on it. It's a seven foot rod, seven foot two rod, one to two kilo. Um, such a good rod and reel. If you can see, I've got a little hard body spooled up on it just at the moment because I've been out flicking these light hard bodies with this rod and reel. So for purpose, this is a really good one for flicking those light hard bodies, whether it be under wharves, into snags, along flats, all that stuff. Because it has a really, really light tip and it has a lot of bend in it. So you can flick those lightly weighted lures a lot better with that. Um, I've got spooled up six pound braid on this 2000 size crossfire, um, probably one of 1000 size reel. The 2000, it weights out nicely. So when we talk about weight in fishing, we're talking about where, see how the rod is bouncing around everywhere. So that's not where it's balanced. If I move my finger a little bit further, we have that balance there. You kind of want the balance roughly around there, around your hand, so then it feels light in your hands. You don't want it too far to the butt or too far to the tip, then it would feel a bit weird. But it's a nicely balanced setup, but the, just that little bit lighter reel might make um, the balance just feel a little bit better. But it's not something I'm terribly worried about. Spooled up with uh, six pound braid. You can spool it up with four pound. I just spooled up with six pound because that's what I had around. Um, most of the time I'm running either six to eight pound leader on this because it's only a one to two kilo rod, depending on what fish I'm targeting and the quality of the water. So if you've seen in previous episodes, I've upped it to 10 pound leader on this rod and reel um, because I'm chasing flathead in dirty water. So you can go up in leader when you go into that more dirtier water. But like for example, the port hacking is a really, really clear system. You want to try and go as light as you can in that sort of system. So six pound is probably the lightest I go. Even when I'm targeting flathead, I get really scared running six pound. Um, but if you're smart about it and you can really work um, work your lures properly and make sure you're getting plenty of mouth hookups and all that sort of stuff, you'll be fine on six pound on flathead. Obviously, if a big one comes along, you got slim chances, but you're probably going to catch 20 to 30 40 centimeter fish on this compared to just that one. So yeah, target specific. Um, the fish that I normally target with this, I've caught, again, I've caught some crazy fish with this one by accident. I've caught a meter 20 dew fish on this one to two, two kilo rod, completely by accident fishing for salmon. Um, I've caught a 75 centimeter kingfish on this rod. Again, completely by accident, saw a bass up, thought that was salmon managed to be a kingfish and uh, landed it. So this rod packs a punch. Um, it does well. It definitely fights well out of its weight category. Um, but the majority of the fish that I use this rod on are flathead and salmon are the two biggest ones. I don't really target brim as much, but you can target your brim, your bass, your estuary perch, um, small tailor, trevally, um, yeah. All those sort of ones that you would catch generally in the river is what I use this rod for. It's my favorite rod and reel to use because I love how light it is in the hand. It is very, very light and I could flick lures all day with this. Um, but also it is a very good rod to use 
um, in a lot of different situations. So I can use this for hard body, flicking hard bodies, I can use it flicking very, very light lures, um, I can use it on the surface, but I can the majority of the time I fish soft plastic, so I'm fishing anything from a quarter ounce to one twentieth of an ounce on this rod and reel. Quarter ounce is starting to get a little bit too heavy for this rod and reel, but it handles it just fine. Um, if I was going to go like three eighths of an ounce in the river or something like that, I'd probably have to upgrade my rod and reel for that because of the cast weight. It only, can only carry roughly about five grams maximum. So that, that quarter ounce jig head is probably the maximum you could use with it. But really, really good rod for flicking light, small lures around the river to catch anything. Um, and like I've said, I've caught some big fish on it as well. So it can handle it. So don't be afraid when you hear one to two kilo rod. It's actually, yeah, it's such good fun with this light lure. So this is what I would call my light, light tackle setup for flathead, brim, estuary perch, trevally, small tailor, and salmon and stuff like that if I want to have some fun. So that what I'm going to be having in my hand in the estuary for probably 90% of the time. I'm going to be using this rod and reel. So that's our like light, light setup. And next one's currently rigged up with a bait jig because I've been using it to catch live bait recently. Um, this is like our light setup. So we've got our light, light, <laughs> and then our light setup. So this is a Daiwa LDZ 702. Again, seven foot rods. I really, really like rods that are over seven foot or at seven foot because most of the time I do cast lures. I don't bait fish that often. So having rods that are over seven foot is almost a must when you're fishing plastics, when you're fishing any types of lures, just so you can get that extra finesse up the tip end, but also you get that cast distance. You can cast the lure a lot further away from the boat than you can with a shorter rod. Um, this one spooled up with a 2,000, let me just double check, 2,000, 2,500 LDZ reel, um, and it's a 702 LDZ rod. It's two to four kilo, got um, perfect for that just that slightly heavier soft plastic. So if I'm using quarter ounce, three eighths of an ounce to try and fish maybe deeper water in the Hacking, Port Botany, any of those um, sort of systems where it's probably, I'm fishing 10 plus meters to get down, I use this sort of rod and reel. This is really good for vibes as well, fishing with vibes, this sort of two to four kilo roll with a bit more of um, a heavier section, not as light of a taper in it. Um, is also really good for using it on things like that, things like vibes and stuff like that. So that's a really, really good option um, as your light setup. The only thing I don't really like, particularly about this setup, it's not necessarily about the setup, but I'm not the biggest fan of this reel. Um, the rod and the tape is really, really nice. Don't get me wrong, I like that, but I'm just not the biggest fan of this, this reel. So I don't really use this setup that much, or you might not see me hardly ever use it. That's why I have it as a bait rig. But if you go to any tackle store and you look for a two to four kilo rod, just making sure that it is over seven foot if you're going to fish with lures. Um, even if you're going to fish with bait, just have it over seven foot. I, I find the longer the rod, the better. Um, if you can get like a 762, that's a really good one. I've had a few 762, two to four kilo rods before. They were absolutely amazing. So seven foot range for bait fishing and lure fishing is my preferred method other people might say different but i just like that little bit extra length just to give you extra cast distance and a bit more finesse feel as well so not necessarily worrying about this reel um you could put a different reel on this it would be such a good rod so um two and a half thousand size for this sort of rod and reel is the maximum that you would go with um, you could go for a 2,000 or a 1,000 on this run reel and just be fine. Again, if we look at the balance of this reel, it sits roughly just in front of, or just on the tip of the cork handle there. It sits nicely there. So again, very well balanced in the hand. It feels like when you're holding it in your hand, you're holding where all the weight is and it doesn't feel like it's going to be tipping this way or tipping that way whenever you're fishing it. So... Nice little light setup. Next thing we move on to is what I would call our medium setup. So this medium setup that I've got is a Daiwa Legalis, what is it, 802, 3 to 7 kilo. 
this is a really, really great rod and reel combo that I've acquired over the last, say, year. I reckon I would have upgraded to this sort of medium, really, really long rod. Um, eight foot, so really, really long rod. I can cast big plastics for snapper, go really, really far. I can cast 30, 40 meters ahead of the boat, let that slowly sink down. I've had a lot of success on the snapper in winter here off Sydney with this exact rod and reel I've caught. A couple in the 60s, a couple 50s, and plenty of other legal size snapper with this. Um, it's got a 2,500 size crossfire. Probably should upgrade to the 3,000 size purely because of line capacity. So the line capacity on this is about 60, 70 meters. Um, and so if I lose a little bit of line, say I get a wind knot or something like that and I can't untangle it, it's very hard to take this out to the deeper reefs and fish a little bit heavier, I'd have to go to a different setup to do that. So a 3,000 size reel would probably be perfect for this, but the 2,500 size just does really well either way. Um, you just gotta be careful and know that if you're gonna be losing a little bit of line, um, that you might have to re-spool it a bit more often than not. Um, balance, again, the balance is pretty similar. It's pretty hard with the lure in the way. Balance is pretty similar right on the tip of the reel there where the reel seat is what i really really love about these sort of rods if you're going to get like a three to seven kilo rod to throw bigger lures so i've been targeting big flathead in the uh, rivers with not a lot of success at the moment but still a lot of fun to throw these like say three eighths of an ounce all the way up to one ounce um, jig heads or even throwing really really light but bigger lures for like kingfish in the river big flutter in the river, snapper offshore, kingfish off the reefs, all that sort of stuff. This is a really good one because it has a longer butt tip. So the butt tip's nice and long. It means when I'm going to cast, I can really have a lot of leverage to whip my lure really, really far. So if I'm, say, in the river fishing with a like one sixth ounce, one sixth ounce jig head and a seven inch plastic, quite a lighter setup, I can still get it far away from the boats so if I'm fishing those clear shallow sand flats for flathead. So uh, I mainly use about 10 to 12 pound liter on this rod and reel setup. Again, that braid is, uh, I think it's 12 pound liter, so it's a bit heavy for a two and a half thousand size reel. Again, that's why upgrading to that 3000 size reel might help you guys a little bit. But when I went to the tackle store, that's all I had on offer. So I just bought it and I haven't replaced it with a 3000 size yet because I haven't felt the need to do it. Uh, most of the time I'm running 20 pound liter. Sometimes I might go to 25, 30. Sometimes I might go down to 15, depending on what I'm chasing. But for the majority of time, whether it be snapper on the reefs, kingfish on the reefs here off Sydney, um, I'm using 20 pound liter, 15 pound braid roughly. Um, some people might think that's a bit crazy, but um, I find the lighter you go, the more bites you get. Um, and the more success you're going to have as long as you are good at fighting fish and you can angle the fish up and uh, use all those fighting techniques to be able to prevent them. Again, one of my favorite rods and reels to use to target the bigger fish that might be in your river systems, big jewies, all that sort of stuff, but also a great rod and reel for shallow offshore reefs, kingfish, snapper, all those sorts of fish that target around there. Again, a great addition that I've put into my stable over the last, say, year that has really, really upped my game in regards to fishing shallow reefs offshore. Uh, the next one that I've used quite a lot when, it, when we're saying we're in 40 plus metres of water, so you're starting to look at jigging or dropping big baits down, is a four to eight kilo bait fishing style setup. So this one, this one is, again, a seven foot rod. Um, but the difference is it has quite a large butt end. So when you're sitting there holding it at the real end, it doesn't actually feel that wrong, that long. It's probably only six and a half foot from the reel to the tip. So that's why it's not necessarily a good casting rod because it doesn't have that length up the top end from when you are actually casting. And when you hold it and look at it, you're like, yeah, it hasn't got a lot of length to it. So it's really, really good for dropping to deep reefs, say 40 to 60 meters. I've dropped this in 80 meters before as well, using jigs. Um, I also use these for trolling live baits off the back of my boat when I'm slow trolling in the river or shallow reefs as well. 
um, it has a multitude of uses. It's a four to eight kilo rod. This is as heavy as I get. So this is what we would call my heavy setup. This is as heavy as I normally go. Some people might go to like an eight to 12 kilo rod, but I really haven't found a fish that I can't catch on this four to eight just yet. Um, it's got a 4,000 size reel, 20 pound braid, and either 20 to 40 pound leader, depending on what I'm targeting. Um, sometimes I use like what I've got rigged up right now. I've got a Paternoster rig rigged up on this one because I've been using it to deep drop off for either flathead offshore or I've used it for snapper in deeper reefs and I've also used them for jigging as well. So really, really good heavy setup, has a multitude of purposes. The last setup I want to talk about is something that's probably a bit different to all of those ones. This is like a very technique specific rod. This is an eggy rod. So it's made for squid fishing. Eggy in Japanese is squid. Um, so this is purpose built to throw squid jigs around and target squid. I've had this rod and reel for two or three seasons now and it absolutely smashes the squid. It's such a good rod and reel for it. It's a 762 rod. It is three to six kilo, but it doesn't feel like a three to six kilo rod. It feels like a two to four kilo rod because it is so lightly tapered up the tip end. So in other words, it's very, very flexible up the tip end. So you can whip those casts with that squid jig and get it really, really far away from the boat in case you're wanting. So the reel is a two and a half thousand size reel spooled with, this one's got eight pound braid. Um, so it's sort of in that middle between that two to four kilo rod that I've got and that three to seven. So although this is technique specific, I have a very, very little soft plastic rig on it with a heavy jig head because I was targeting big salmon with this last time because I thought it's got a nice light taper tick. Um, it will throw those lighter lures a bit better than that three to seven kilo rod because one, it's got lighter braid and I can run a lighter leader on it. Um, so this fit that very technique specific purpose of targeting schooling salmon that were a bit bigger for the two to two to four or the one to two. So um, a really, really good rod to use, yes, for squid, but also it has its other purposes. I've got plenty of flathead on it. I've got plenty of salmon on it um, just to use it, just if I need something in between that light and medium setup. So big thing, um, if you're going to go squid fishing, I'd highly recommend you to get a set up or a combo that's specifically made for it. Um, I used to squid fish just with my light set up, the two to four kilo set up, and now when I've got to this setup, um, my catches that increase purely because of the, the way that the rod's made, the way it all sets up and how easily it works, those squid jigs. Um, the squid come along and absolutely belt it with this rod and reel. So yeah, that's that one. Oh, I forgot. Last bit is the leader. So most of the time I'm running probably 10 pound leader, maybe eight pound leader, maybe 12. So anything from that eight to 12 kilo range or eight to 12 pound range I'm using on squid, just in case I get that bigger one. Um, the lighter you go with the leader, the better, the better sink rate you'll get, the heavier the leader, the slower sink rate you'll go. So you gotta find that sort of middle ground with what weight of jig head, you, oh, sorry, what weight of squid jig you're gonna use and what lady you're actually going to use to target them. So, so that gives you a bit of an idea in all of the setups that I use. Now, I won't take all of these setups out um, for every fish. So say if I'm only going to stay in the river, I'm only going to take, normally I only take my one to two kilo rod, so my light light, and then my medium heavy. So if I see some kings or some good salmon, or I want to fish a shallow flat for a big flatty, I've got that spare. But like I said in the river, 90% of the time, I'm going to use that one to two kilo rod to target any of the fish that are in there. When I go out offshore, that's when I start getting towards my, again, this medium heavy seven foot rod. If I'm fishing plastics, I'm going to be using this um, to target them. If I'm going to like float line or use very, very lightly weighted baits, I'm going to be going to my four to eight kilo rod because it's, it's a lot better bait fishing rod than that bigger one and I can always have that pre-rigged with a lure in case I see a school of kingfish pop up on the sounder 
or there's a bit of bait working or I just want to flick a plastic just quickly around while I'm burling up. Um, and then obviously as we get deeper, the deeper out in the shores we get, the deeper depth of the ocean we go, the more I will use this four to eight kilo rod with a 4,000 size reel with lots of line on it to be able to drop those deep jigs or baits down. Again, if I'm gonna go for squid, I have a rod that's specific for it. So say if I'm gonna go out on a morning's fish, I might go target the squid in the morning. So I'll bring my squid rod, have that pre-rigged all ready to go. And then I might use that squid to target some flathead on the sand flats. I might grab the uh, the two to four kilo rod and use that. Or if I'm gonna go out deeper and stay out offshore, I might use that four to eight kilo. So really what I choose to use is based upon what I want to target, what lure I'm going to use, or what bait I'm going to use. Like I said, in the river, majority of the time I'm using this light setup unless I'm targeting kingfish, big salmon. Um, and I really, really enjoy using the lighter setup. So a few things to take out of this is you need to choose a rod and reel that suits your purpose, suits the fish that you're targeting and the technique that you're using to target them. Um, the depth of water that you are targeting them in and the possible size that they might be. So um, what, I, what I see a lot of the time um, is uh, people using really, really heavy gear and catching really small kingfish is a prime example in the summertime. You see everyone rocking up with huge rods and reels to fish in Botany Bay, Port Hacking and to target kingfish when they really don't need that big of a rod and reel. Yes, sometimes there's going to be a fish that blows you away on these lighter setups, and they might blow me away on these lighter setups, but I guarantee you I'm going to get more bites using the lighter setup than I am with the heavier setup. So something to take into consideration. That's just my opinion. Um, you can take that with a grain of salt and choose whatever you want to do. But from my experience fishing, um, the lighter you go and the crazier you go with the light lures, the small lures, whatever it is, the bigger chances you have of catching those fish of lifetime. Last thing is, if you go and look at any of these rods and reels, so the Daiwa Legalis rods, for example, they're under $150 for a combo. I've never really bought combos that are too expensive. One, I can't really afford a $300 combo, and I use them a lot. So they do get their wear and tear just as much as a $300 combo. A $300 combo might last me a little bit longer, but for example, this reel, this rod's lasted me a year and a half now and it hasn't missed a beat. It's still like I just bought it off the shelf. Um, so yeah, it's really, really about budget as well when you're selecting these rods and reels. You need to think about what you wanna spend on this and I would include braided line into the, that conversation as well because braided line can cost anywhere up to $60 depending on what weight of line and how much line you actually need. Um, when you're looking at selecting your braid, so for example, this one on the reel will actually tell you how much of braid, how many meters of braid it can hold. So this one holds of six pound, it holds 200 meters of six pounds. So I know if I get a 250 meter spool or even a 200 meter spool of six pound braid, it's gonna stack it all the way up to the top. Um, and so on and so forth throughout all the reels. So don't think that you have to go to a tackle store and spend $500 on one setup. Um, across all of those five setups, they're probably worth $500. Um, and I do just fine with them. Yeah, I might have to replace them every third or fourth year, but I reckon most of those expensive setups, you probably have to replace them as well at the same time. So it's each purpose feel. Um, again, if you buy a more expensive rod, it probably has more technology in it, more ball bearing, so it's going to be performing better. But to be honest, this $150 combo, I've tried combos of mates that are $300 and this $150 combo, I couldn't tell the difference between them both. Um, so yeah, you're saving a lot of cash in the back end of it, as long as you look after it. These rods and reels get washed every single time after with fresh water. The reels get serviced by myself every three to six months, depending on how they're feeling. And uh, yeah, that's the biggest thing. And that's uh, a little bit in regards to what I do, what's in my um, stable in regards to rods and reels and how I use them. So yeah, 
hope you all enjoyed that little informative video a bit of a different thing in regards to i wasn't really fishing today and i thought i'd just sit and have a chat with you guys about rods reels all that sort of stuff in future episodes i might do some more how-to videos so if you want to know something you want me to sort of have a sit down and have a talk about what i think about certain techniques it could be or it could be about boats and how my boat is set up and what i use etc etc let me know down in the comments below but as always like subscribe go to seven seas apparel this is their new fishing jersey that they've got just released you'd co use code lunatics 10 to get yourself 10 percent off thank you as always seven seas apparel for supporting us and uh yeah we'll see you in the next one peace out